What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. Now it's been a long minute since I've sat here and talked to you about your favorite team, my favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this isn't going to be typical Treeb Talk status where I sit here and tell you I'm back, I'm better than ever, and I'm going to give you a new video every single week and then not deliver on that promise because I'm going to be a realist here. I'm busy, you're busy, everybody's busy. When I feel like I need to talk about the Jags, I'm going to get up on here on YouTube and talk to you guys about the Jags. And today, what I felt like doing was doing a very Big Cat Country-like thing and doing a little bit of a season recap before the season is even over. Big Cat Country is one of my favorite websites because they do something like that, and I think it's very hilarious because... You know, us Jags fans, and, you know, I think I think Big Cat Country, even though, you know, that that's a website, you know, they got some reporters on there. I think it's more fan-driven. I think, um, you know, what they do for that fan base over there, I think. I think it's funny, and I think it's great. And I think as of right now, and even, you know, if you wanted to go even a couple of weeks back before Urban Meyer even got fired, the Jags season's been over for a long time, and we really could have made this video even a couple of weeks prior, but this was the time that I wanted to sit here and recap and kind of talk to you guys about the Jags. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, there is a lot of people talking about how historically great this head coaching opening is, this head coaching job is for the Jags, and how great of an opportunity it's going to be for a head coach to come in and have everything here at his disposable. Or his disposal, I should say. But, do you know how many times we've heard that? Do you know how many how many times that this has been a great head coaching job, that this this is just going to be the place for the next great head coach to come in and remodel a franchise that has just needed it for years. It's been like that for a long time. And, you know, you throw Trevor Lawrence in the mix, and I get that, but you threw Trevor Lawrence in the mix this year, and he wasn't on the team yet, but you knew, you knew that the with the number one overall pick, that the Jags were going to be getting Trevor Lawrence, and Shad Khan and... You know, everybody in power decided to get Trent Bulky or Balaki, whatever the fuck his name is, and Urban Meyer. And those were the guys that they decided were going to rebuild the culture here in Jacksonville. And what happened? It was an NFL PA nightmare. It was literally exactly a Tom Coughlin situation from a couple of years ago. It was almost as if Shad Khan had not learned his mistakes from the last guy that was an NFL PA nightmare. It was literally the exact same situation with Tom Coughlin. Tom Coughlin, Urban Meyer, same fucking guy. And you know, I myself, just like everybody, like I don't even care. If you're a Jags fan, if you are a Jacksonville Jaguar fan, you talked yourself into the Urban Meyer hire. You did. You thought this was going to be it. This was going to be the guy. And why the fuck did we do that? We knew it. I knew it. I, I knew, I knew, I knew for a fact that this wasn't going to work out in my own, like, mental, right? In my own, like, and I, like my critical thinking brain. It's like having a cheating girlfriend that is going out to the club every night and she is out there wheeling dudes every single week and it's you know just like urban meyer with his wife you know he's out there wheeling younger broads when he just decided to not go on the plane with his team after a thursday night football vic uh, loss and you know he's cheating on his wife urban meyer is a cheating husband and he is cheating on an organization whose fans just want a winning football team and we just trusted you urban we trusted you herbs we thought this guy did it for Florida, but that Florida organization so bad that literally every time on like an NFL memes, college football memes, any kind of memes, everybody wants a 30 for 30 for on that fucking football team because of how bad he ran it. Like so many people went to jail. Aaron Hernandez was on that team. I mean, god dang, really, for real. 
Like, this was never going to work out, Chad. Like, this is not a historical, historically great opening. Why? Because the people that are in charge are the people that own the franchise. Shad Khan is not interested in building a winning franchise. He's just not. And, and you know, the NFLPA has before warned free agents and warned players from signing with Jacksonville. And when that happens... These these top tier free agents don't want to come here and don't want to play. The Jags have money. The Jags had money last year, and the best free agent that they brought in was Roy Robertson Harris, and he's been you know I guess all right. I I don't know. Marvin Jones was in the mix. He's fighting with Urban Meyer and he's dropping passes, but you know he's never he was never meant to be a number one number two receiver, but here he is. You know, like, right now, the Jags are in a position to where this next head coaching hire that they make is going to make or break the franchise. This is either going to completely take the franchise to the next level, and it's going to be a competent, you know, above average to average franchise that really has an opportunity to win because the AFC South is, you know, it's up in the air, always is. Or the Jags might not be a franchise anymore, and I'm freaking serious when I say that. And when I say, like, not a franchise anymore, I mean, I don't know 100% the logistics behind it because I know Shad Khan is making a lot of money. Like, he he's making a lot of money in Jacksonville. So the chances of, like, the Jags disbanding, I don't know how 100% realistic that is. But if you got the NFLPA not having free agents want to come here, if you keep messing up coaching hire after coaching hire, you ain't winning football games. There's no reason for the Jacksonville Jaguars to be an active NFL team. There has never been a time in my life as a Jags fan... Now, I don't know if it's because I'm older. I don't know if it's because I'm wiser to win. The Jags are going to win games and when they're going to lose games. But I have never been so indifferent about a season. I mean, this has literally been the most boring and the worst Jacksonville Jaguars season that I have ever watched. Ever. Ever. It's been bad. I mean, even the two wins, the Bills game was cool. I mean, it was a defensive powerhouse beating a team that you weren't supposed to beat. I think the Miami game was more fun um, in London. That was a better win. But, I mean, there is just so much going wrong, and it all relies on who you decide to come in and be the next head coach of this organization. Because... Right now, if you bring in a guy like Jim Caldwell, who is, you know, that's kind of, Jim Caldwell and Doug Peterson, that's kind of where the nail is, that's where the needle's tipping towards. (coughs) Granted, Doug Peterson took the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Jim Caldwell's been a consistent coach, but Caldwell has a losing, like, it's like a 4-37 record against teams with winning records. The Jags probably all time have a 4 and like 50 record against teams with winning records. Like we are not good you know against teams with winning records. Like that's not a guy that's going to tip the scale. You know, and you bring in a guy like Doug Peterson who I don't think is going to tip the scale that way either. The thing is is this this whole organization needs a culture change. They need somebody that's going to come in and you know, I don't want to say somebody you know, brand new, but honestly, you kind of need to bring somebody in brand new to the head coaching job, to this reins, to this organization, and maybe even somebody that's been around for a while, right? You know, bring in a Byron Leftwich. I think another guy that would be cool, you know, a guy that I grew up watching when I was a kid, one of my favorite football players ever, the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys, Kellen Moore. 
I think bringing in one of those guys as a first-time head coach, I know Urban Meyer didn't work out, but I think bringing in one of those guys, that is going to be your best bet. I don't think bringing in a guy like Jim Caldwell or Doug Peterson is going to tip the scale enough in your favor. I also think bringing in a new GM is going to work out because this year's draft class was poo-poo, was poo-poo, caca, terrible. I mean, Tyson Campbell really kind of show he's shown up like towards the later part of the season because he's had to. I mean, he's had to grow up a lot. He has had to grow up a lot and he's had to uh you know really mature because he's getting those snaps. He's playing meaningful snaps and he's getting better. And Andre Sisco who's played who played one game last this week against the Jets and he's looked good. And you know, Travis Etienne with the injury and, you know, if this year James Robinson with the Achilles injury, he's probably going to get the start at running back next year. I mean, it's just like we we need, a, we need, to, we need to hit. We need to hit on everything next year. And we need to build a contender by fucking spending money in the right ways and not being afraid to throw a bag at a guy that you know is going to perform, right? You know, like, if we're going to go out there and spend some money, you're going to have to spend some money on a big-name receiver. And you're going to have to do it, and you're going to have to try and con- like convince some of these guys. Like, you know, Chris Godwin, who's hurt. I mean, he's he's not a guy um, that you throw a bag at. But, like, Devontae Adams... Like, if you want to bring in, like, a Devontae Adams, you're going to have to bring in one big name on offense and one big name on defense. Devontae Adams and, like, Chandler Jones. You're going to have to bring in two big heavy hitters if you want this team to turn things around next year and you want this team to be around, contend, and be, you know, good. And you're going to have to hit on these draft picks that you have. They can't be so, so average. Like, you're picking, you're going to probably have the first overall pick in back-to-back years, and you're going to have to make, you're picking at the top of the order in all these rounds. So, every time you're picking at the top of the order of these rounds, you are going to have to make sure that you are getting your guy and you are not reaching. Last year, I felt like the Jags did a lot of reaching in the draft. And this year, you can't make that mistake. Like, if you are going to try and build a contender, you know, make a product that your fans are happy for and that you are proud of, you're going to have to hit on these picks. Especially because there are some positions that you need to upgrade substantially that you haven't even upgraded in two plus years that are so down bad it's ridiculous. The safety position, ridiculously bad. Andrew Wingard, who has been probably the most shit on Jacksonville Jaguar, maybe of all time, somehow has been like that starting safety for like three years. Like, oh my god, like get him out of there. We're gonna have to bring somebody in there, and there's some, you know, viable free agent safeties out there, and you know, you're gonna have to try and get somebody in the door. That's better than Andrew Winger, and you probably don't have to try that hard to get somebody that is better than him. Somebody that can rush the quarterback. Josh Allen, Dewan Smoot. Dewan Smoot is getting better every single year, but you know that he's not he's not like the difference maker. You got Josh Allen, and if you get like a Chandler Jones in there, perfect. You need a middle linebacker. Like there are just there are so many guys that play on the Jags that aren't starting NFL caliber guys on any other roster except the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it's just ridiculous. And it's like this is a problem year in and year out, and it's almost getting to the point, which is why I said earlier in the video, that it's like this is almost an organization that is going to be turning the page, but the page is going to be actually the back half of the cover of the book and closing the book. Because this is an organization that might not be around anymore. Because it's that down bad. The Jacksonville Jaguars are down bad. And they're going to have to make a lot of decisions in the offseason. And they're going to have to get it right. 
my my biggest thing is is in order to get it right I mean you're gonna have to hit on top of the draft order and to be completely honest I haven't looked at anything in the draft this year and you're gonna have to sign one or two I you know my ideal thing is with free agency this year I I don't know where the Packers sit on Devontae Adams or what Devontae Adams is doing but that is a guy that you need to go out and get if he's available you need to give him as much money as he wants you get him, and then you're going to have to bring in another guy too, another receiver also with him. Whether that is bringing Allen Robinson home, getting a Will Fuller, you know, getting any of those guys, bring them in. Because, like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough because these receivers are bad. I mean, when you have Laquan Treadwell, Tavon Austin, like it's 2012 and these are your best receivers – like, inept. It's awful. Terrible. Terrible. It's terrible football. Like, nobody should have to sit through it. Nobody should have to sit through what we as Jags fans had to sit through this year. And honestly, they need to spend big money. They need to spend big money. And they need to spend it on the receiver. They need to spend it on pass rush. Honestly, probably another corner. The safety position. Linebackers. And the offensive line is a whole nother can of worms that I haven't even opened yet. I mean, there's some free agents there. I mean, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder there. I mean, they're going to have to shuffle some guys. And, you know, the offensive line hasn't even played bad this year, but they're going to have to, you know, figure out what they want to do there in order for that to be a successful unit for Trevor Lawrence. But it starts with giving him targets. Any, any and all. Like, oh my god, it was just ridiculous this year. Like, I, I really thought the wide receiver position was going to be a strength of this team this year, but LaVisca Chenault was one of the most overhyped players that we've ever overhyped in our entire fandom. Probably ever. Like, he couldn't catch anything this year. DJ Chark's injury hurt. Marvin Jones was not as good as we made him out to be. Um... Yeah, just overall, man, like, we we overrated those guys so bad. Like, we need two, three guys to do. We need a whole new room. Like, bad, man. We need it. And and the running back position, I think, should be solved. Like, there's, there is probably only two positions on offense that are completely locked in, and maybe I don't. I kind of want to say Dan Arnold's locked in at tight end. I think that was that was a good trade. I think he's solid, and I think we got him in. But I think Trevor Lawrence and James Robinson and Travis Etienne at the running back. I think that is a solid core there. But as far as the offensive line and receivers, man, you need to go out there and dress that whole thing. So like Trent Baalke should be doing his best to figuring out what the actual fuck he's going to be doing. Because we need to spend every bit of money we have and make sure these contracts are meaningful. On defense, the defense hasn't even been playing bad this year, but we need a a whole defensive line. Other than Josh Allen, we need like a whole defensive line. All the linebackers. All the linebackers. I mean, Caleb Von Chase on, another guy. Big bust. I mean, I don't think anybody really said that he was much of anything, but he, yeah, he's a big bust. First-round bust, another one. Add him to the list. Um, secondary, I think Shaq Griffin was kind, he's kind of overhyped, but I think he's he is what he is, I think. Tyson Campbell, so we need another corner in there. Preferably pay a guy, you know. If we spend a big money on a big name corner, I wouldn't be mad about that. Both safeties. I mean, there there is a lot of work to be done on this entire Jacksonville Jaguars team that um if if you think that this team's going to be fixed next year, or if you think they're even going to be remotely competitive next year, I have some bad news for you. It's going to be a long, bumpy ride. doesn't matter who they bring in to be the head coach. This Jags team is probably 
two to three off seasons away from competing and they and they took a big a big step back this year because they didn't do anything last year with the regime they had so you know that sucks last year was a wasted off season because i mean the draft and like you know now that i'm talking about it i think the draft class from last year could be not so bad honestly i mean you look at it walker little from the snaps he's gotten hasn't played great hasn't played great at all um, but Andre Sisco from the snaps, he's getting, he looks all right. Tyson Campbell's improving every time he's on the field. Travis Etienne, we haven't seen him, but, you know, hopefully knock on what he produces. Um, I'm trying to think of everybody else, but, I mean, those are your big three-round guys. And, and I mean, for the most part, they're looking all right. So, I mean, if those guys hit, you know, we just gotta we gotta keep hitting in the draft, and we gotta spend a lot of money because right now it's it's looking like this is gonna be a long rebuild and a long, long, long years ahead of us. Like the Jags might not make the playoffs until I'm in my forties. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to this season recap. What do you guys think about the Jaguars season? Let me know in the comment section down below, and if you haven't already, you can check all my links down below as well thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest of your day